Hey guys, you're watching Jay's Two Cents and you've opened up this video because you are interested in seeing what it takes to unlock the voltage and load a custom BIOS on your Kepler-based graphics card. Now first things first, there's going to be some things that we talk about in this video that reference a previous video of mine called How to Overclock Your Video Card. And that video is right here, and I recommend that you watch that video before doing this, that way you have a total understanding of what it is we are about to do. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and click it now, it's going to pop up on the screen. Click it and watch it, and then come back. I can wait. I've got all night. Seriously. I have like absolutely no life. I'm waiting. Okay, so now that you've gone to watch that video, there's a couple of programs that we're going to need in order to unlock our graphics card. And uh, those programs are GPU-Z, NVFlash, and KGB. We have an optional program in here called Kepler BIOS Editor. We'll touch on that a little bit later. Now, the result that we're looking for here is we want to be able to up the power percentage of our Kepler-based graphics card. And by doing so, it tells the boost clock that you're looking to add more power and more megahertz and more stuff to make your games awesome. So if you open up your MSI Afterburner or EVGA Precision or whatever program you use to over overclock your graphics card, you can see the power limit is stuck at 132%. That's the max, can't go any farther. And the maximum voltage is 1.1 volts. As you can see right here, we're idling at 0.9. If I hit apply, we will pop up to 1.087 volts. And uh, there, that's it, that's all we got. And because of that, it really limits the amount of overclocking that we can do. Right now, the maximum stable overclock I've been able to achieve with my 680 it's 1,306 megahertz, which is a great overclock. In fact, that's much higher than many, many 680s out there. And very few people have been able to reach that overclock on stock volts like I have. But because I want free power, I want to overclock this farther. And so here we are today. Now, as always, before you continue, you have to realize that there's a certain level of risk involved when you do this. Because you are going to be flashing a custom BIOS onto your graphics card, unlikely something's going to go wrong, but there is always the slight chance that something could. So you're doing this at your own risk. I'm not responsible if you break your graphics card because somehow power got shut off to your computer in the middle of the flashing process, which will leave it a very expensive doorstop. And if you need to send it back to get it serviced, they'll see that the RAM, ROM was messed with and it's half flashed and they won't RMA it for you unless they're amazing and which case maybe they will, but we don't want that to happen. So remember, this is at your own risk. You are also gonna to wanna to make sure that you have adequate cooling in your case and your graphics card. You wanna make sure that you have uh, plenty of airflow because airflow is very important. Now you can do this on a reference cooler. However, I do recommend that you be doing this on a uh, custom after or custom or aftermarket water cooling. I am water cooled. As you can see right here, my graphics card is currently running at 24 degrees and my CPU is at 27 and my cores are all low 20s. So yeah, my water cooling is more than adequate, but so is your uh, EVGA dual fans or your direct CU2 from Asus. All of those are more than adequate for this as well. The blower style fans, you can do it. It's just gonna be a lot louder because you're gonna have to run the fans uh, a lot f faster in order to make sure that uh, you have adequate cooling. So you're gonna sacrifice a lot of noise level for this. Okay, getting back to the whole reason why you're here. I'm going to delete that file or pretend it wasn't there. Okay, so GPU-Z, NVFlash, and KGB are the main programs we're going to use. Kepler BIOS Editor is an optional program we'll talk about briefly a little bit later. First thing you want to do is open up GPU-Z. Now, I am not putting links to these programs in this video because the links are constantly changing and eventually the links will be broken and I don't want that. So you're going to have to go to Google and do a search for these programs. They're easy to find and there's plenty of tech forums of people talking about these programs. It won't be hard for you to find it at all. Now, with GPU-Z open, you can see all kinds of numbers and things on here, but the only thing you care about is the BIOS version right here. And all the way to the right, you'll see this little download link. It says Save BIOS. Click that click Save BIOS, it's going to extract the BIOS from your graphics card. 
and it's gonna turn it into a ROM file here that you can now save. Save it to the location of these files. And I highly recommend that you make a folder with all three of these programs uh, inside that folder, that way they're easily accessible in one place. So go ahead and save it. And you can see now we've saved our GK104 ROM. You can close GPU-Z, and here's our ROM right here. The next thing I recommend you do is that you make a copy of it, and you save it to your desktop. And then rename this uh, GK104 Backup with no spaces. There you go, there's a backup of our ROM. We're now good to go in case we have to revert this ROM back for whatever reason. Second thing you're gonna do now is you're gonna take a copy of this ROM, the one you downloaded to your Flash Tools folder, which is what I called my folder on the desktop. I called it Flash Tools and I put the programs in there. We're gonna open up the folder called KGB. And we are gonna save a copy of our ROM right there. So now you have three files in here. GK104, or whatever yours is named, a KGB config file, and an application file. Now, if you open the KGB config file, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff in here. All the stuff with the hashtags is uh, items that can be modified, basically. Or they're commented out, like this warning right here telling you don't go with a voltage higher than 1.212. So your fan minimum is still 30, but if you recall in the overclocking video, the fan profile wasn't allowed to go any higher than 85. But now with this ROM, or the addition to the ROM that we are adding, and by the way, what we're doing here is we're adding these parameters to the stock ROM. So we're not replacing it entirely, we're modifying it. Now the fan max is set to 100. So now you have control of your fans all the way up to 100%, up from 85, that's pretty cool, huh? Your max power target, as you can see now, is at 150, up from 132. I recommend leaving this at 150. I wouldn't go any higher than that. Now, down here, your uh, settings down here is probably going to look more like this, where the voltage has no hashtag next to it for the value of 1.18 volts. That's because this ROM by default says, okay, 1.18 is probably a pretty good place uh, to assume that all graphics cards can handle that voltage. If you have adequate cooling like I do, you could add the hashtag back to that and back out the hashtag next to the 1.212. So this would now become the active voltage. If you had left the hashtag there and you commented out this hashtag next to the 1.20, then 1.20 would be the max. So what you're telling this is how far up you'll allow it to go. And that is whichever one you take the hashtag off. So once you're done with that, file, save. You now have a saved version of that ROM in the KGB folder. The next thing you wanna do now is you wanna apply these changes to the stock ROM. So go to your start menu, hit command. If you're on Windows 8, I don't know how you bring up a command prompt. You have to figure that one out on your own. And you wanna to navigate to wherever you saved your Flash Tools folder, which is what I recommend calling it. So it's nice and simple. I saved mine on the desktop. So for that, this is a command prompt. It looks a lot like DOS. If you don't know how to use this, this is, you're gonna be a little out of your element, but it's easy. You're gonna do CD for change directory, space, the name of your hard drive, which is in my case, the C drive, colon backslash, users, backslash, the name of your computer, backslash desktop. Now this is only a good path if you saved it to your desktop. If you put it in your C drive, you'll have to navigate to it that way. Backslash flash tools, because that's the name of the folder, backslash KGB. Now we are in the KGB folder. What we wanna do now is we wanna run a simple command to, to tell KGB to apply this config to this ROM. And from inside the KGB folder in the command prompt, that is kgb.exe for execute, the name of the ROM, gk104.rom, space, unlock, hit enter. And there you go, you saw some stuff happen. Now you can see the new max power target is 150%. And now you can see we've got a voltage table that's been applied. Congratulations, you've now modified this ROM. But you're not done yet because now you have to copy this ROM or cut, I like to cut, I don't like copies of it everywhere, and paste it inside your NV Flash folder. And as you can see, I had a backup folder and file in there because we were already playing around with this. So now we have a copy of GK104. And if you wanna make this a little bit simpler to keep track of this, you could rename that to unlocked. It doesn't matter what you name it. And now we have GK104 unlocked.rom. 
So now we need to flash our graphics card. And that is the most important point of this entire video is getting this ROM on your graphics card. So move over here to your command prompt and navigate to your flash tools drive. And if you were still had it open from inside the KGB, you could do CD dot dot for change directory and go back dot dot is go back. And you're now in your flash tools and you can do, uh, actually you can up arrow and instead of the uh, KGB, you can put an NV flash and now you're in the NV flash folder. Now we're gonna run another simple command to apply this ROM to your graphics card. And that command from inside the NV flash folder in the command, command prompt is NV flash space, the name of the ROM, GK104 unlocked, because we renamed it, dot ROM, don't forget the dot ROM, and there you go. Now it's gonna say, okay, here's the current version of the ROM, and here is the replace with version of the ROM. They pretty much look identical, because remember, we took the stock ROM and modified it. And it says, update the display driver firmware. Yes to confirm, or any other key to abort. Press Y, and off it goes. It now warns you that it may flash the screen a few times, it may uh, go black for a little bit, that's normal. And as you can see here, it's cleared the original firmware image, if you're reading it, and it says now it's storing the updated firmware. This is the most detrimental part of the entire process. This is also the part where under no circumstances should you reboot, should you do anything on your computer until this is complete and says successful, which it does right here, verifying update, update successful. Congratulations, you've now unlocked and loaded a modified ROM on your Kepler-based graphics card. And this works on anything GTX 660 and newer. I'm not positive it works on the 650 or the TI Boost or not. You're gonna have to do some research on that before you try that. Now apply, to apply the ROM, you simply restart your computer and we will come back as soon as we're rebooted. Okay, we're back, my desktop's loading up, and uh, we've got our backup ROM here, we've got our flash tools, and we have modified the ROM, and we've applied it to our graphics card using NV Flash. And guys, before you ask, this is an NVIDIA card with an NVIDIA process, I don't know how to do this on AMD, you're gonna have to do research on that if you're using an AMD graphics card. Now, to make sure that our apply actually worked, you can bring up MSI Afterburner, and the first thing you want to do is slide the power limit all the way to the right. And as you can see, we now have control all the way up to 150% of our power limit. You can bring the voltage all the way to the right as well. And if you look down here where the voltage is on the monitoring, it's currently 1.987 volts, or excuse me, 0 0.987 volts. If we hit apply, you can see you've got 1.087. Now the reason for that is because we are still in a non-boost mode and uh, we can play with our core clock here in a moment. Now, if we open up a program like, say, Valley Benchmark, and we load this in a windowed mode, just so that we don't cut off our recording here, we can take a look at our core clock right here. And you guys are probably hearing that music, sorry about that. You can see our core clock right now is at uh, 904 and jumps up and down based on load. Right now it's not, oh I'm sorry, here, here we go, that was memory guys, it's late, don't judge me. Okay, as you can see right here we have a core clock of 1333 megahertz. That is because I am currently running a overclock of 140 megahertz. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is that, uh, and if you're wondering how I got that overclock, again, you have to go watch that other video. It explains all of this. Now, one thing that's different though in this video uh, and how the overclocking works from the other video is that the 140 doesn't necessarily equal 140 megahertz anymore. It's an it's a non-linear slide where it's affected the mult it's affected the multiplier a little bit, and so it's you're going to have to play with it, like. Re adding one megahertz right now actually adds about eight uh, megahertz to the overclock. So it does change that in that aspect, but that's okay because as you saw, we had a 1,333 megahertz uh, overclock. 
Now, because the boost was 1050 and we we're at 1333, we were just under 300 megahertz overclock, nearly 30% overclock on a graphics card. Guys, that is almost unheard of. And so unlocking your voltage, as you can see, is just free power, as long as you have the, uh, the cooling capacity to handle that. Now, real quick, before we move on to the next item, you saw earlier there's this Kepler BIOS Editor version 1.1. Now, what this is, it's a program that will open up any BIOS that you've pulled off. And as you see right here, we have GK104 unlocked. We can open that. And this gives you the details about that. You can change what the boost frequency goes to. You can change what the, in fact, here is that chart with the uh, multiplier right here. So you can see we were at 1050, uh, which is a 34 multiplier. Uh, not much you need to really worry about there. Power, you can see what our new power limit is, which is 255 watt or 150%. Power limit low high. And you can see your fan control now goes up to 100%. If you had loaded the stock ROM in here, you'd see it said 85. We'll leave that at 100, even though I don't have a fan in here. Now in the voltage, it says 1.187, but as you can see down here, when we load it up for a moment there, we did go as high as, if you look at my cursor, we did go up to 1.212, which is exactly what we wanted in the BIOS. So if you wanted to use this program here, you could modify the BIOS and save it and then load that. So you could play with what the boost clocks are. So you don't have to have MSI Afterburner or EVGA Precision or any of those programs running to get your boost clock. It could just be automatic in the BIOS. Now, you guys knowing me the way I am, trying to get as much power and performance as I can out of my stuff, I wanna push this to the limit. All right, now I wanna see if I can get a 250 megahertz overclock on top of the boost. Let's see if we can't get 1400 megahertz out of this bad boy. I mean, honestly, what is the worst that can happen? 